Brooklyn Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, August 17th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. This episode is literally powered by Lightship, the long-range electric self-propelling travel trailer. We have published three videos featuring detailed walkarounds, in-depth interviews with the founders, and even an early look at the factory. Today, I'm back at the factory near Denver, Colorado to tow a production unit and have a look at the upcoming affordable trim levels. You'll find links to our latest coverage in this video's description if you'd like to learn more. On to the news. On Monday, Ford Motor Company CEO Jim Farley delivered what he had been promoting as the company's Model T moment. He unveiled more details about their upcoming universal EV platform and production system from their Louisville, Kentucky assembly plant. The $5 billion initiative, including a $2 billion investment to retool their existing Louisville facility where the Ford Escape and Lincoln Corsair are currently built, as well as $3 billion they've already invested in the Marshall, Michigan battery plant. In Marshall, they will produce battery cells using LFP cell technology licensed from Chinese battery giant CATL. One result of this investment will be a new lineup of affordable EVs, starting with a mid-size electric pickup truck priced at about $30,000 set to launch in 2027. Farley says the pickup will offer more passenger room than a Toyota RAV4, a 0 to 60 mile per hour time comparable to a Mustang EcoBoost, which is under 5 seconds, and will feature a frunk, exportable power that could power a home for up to 6 days, and Blue Cruise automated driving technology. He mentioned the truck will also be able to lock all gear, like a kayak inside of it, without dropping the tailgate. Could that mean there will be a mid-gate or a new tailgate design? Jim had previously told me that the now-delayed T3 full-size pickup truck would have a radical design with deployable aero. I wonder if this smaller truck will too. During the presentation, Jim reiterated that this new universal EV platform was spearheaded by their Skunk Works team based in Long Beach, California, the successor to Team Edison, which had once been based in Detroit. He said the new platform reduces production complexity by using 20% fewer parts, 25% fewer fasteners, and 40% fewer workstations compared to a typical vehicle. Former Apple and Tesla executive and Ford's current chief EV digital and design officer, Doug Fields, said they followed Elon Musk's common phrase, the best part is no part. Ford has been doing their homework. They took pages from the Tesla playbook as well as all successful EV manufacturers worldwide. On the topic of efficiency, the same obsession with efficiency goes across every part to make the whole. So we can actually, compared to a typical generation one electric vehicle, we can get the same range with a third less battery. And that's the kind of ingenuity we need to compete with the Chinese. The platform's wiring harness is 4,000 feet shorter than that of the Mustang Mach-E, cutting weight by 22 pounds and reducing tariff-related costs. Similar to Rivian's recent zonal architecture improvements, which were made last year by the California brand's second-generation R1 lineup. Ford is also adopting cobalt and nickel-free prismatic lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries, which are lower cost and will serve as the vehicle's structural floor, enhancing interior space and lowering the center of gravity. The company said they're aiming for a battery that's nearly 15% smaller than that of Chinese-made BYD's Addo, which would total nearly 50 kilowatt hours. Farley said the model would be ideal for drivers who can plug it in at home and generally travel less than 300 miles. It will be based on 400 volt architecture, even if they decided to offer a longer range variant based on a high nickel battery chemistry. This means we can expect a fast charging speed that's capped around 250 kilowatts. The new Ford Universal EV production system replaces the traditional assembly line with an assembly tree model. This process splits production into three parallel sub-assemblies, front, rear, and a structural battery pack that converge at the end. While Ford claimed they'll be the first to use this process, Tesla is already producing the CyberCab pre-production units using the very similar unboxed process. They confirmed that process had already begun at the end of 2024 in the Q4 earnings call, and hundreds of castings are staged outside Tesla's Texas Gigafactory. 
Speaking of castings, Ford will also begin using large single-piece aluminum unicastings to replace dozens of smaller parts, enabling faster assembly of the front and rear sections. Ford estimates this method could reduce total assembly time by up to 40% with a net 15% speed increase after reinvesting some savings into automation. The system also improves worker ergonomics by over 80% by delivering pre-assembled kits with all the necessary tools and fasteners, minimizing physical strain. Jim Farley emphasized the platform's flexibility to support various vehicle types, from trucks to SUVs, and its potential to make EVs both competitive and profitable. Just a few days ago before the announcement, Ford revealed they would be delaying several EVs that were expected to debut starting in 2026, including a full-size electric pickup truck codenamed T3, which is intended as a successor to the F-150 Lightning, and a next-generation e-transit electric van. Both were originally scheduled for earlier launches, but were postponed to 2028. As we previously reported here on The Current, the T3 pickup that will be produced at Ford's Blue Oval City plant in Tennessee was initially set to debut in 2025 and later delayed to 2026 and again to 2027, marking this as the third pushback. The company also previously planned for a mid-decade launch of a new electric van to be built at Ford's Avon Lake, Ohio plant, but had delayed it to 2026 and for the second time to 2028. They also indefinitely delayed the all-electric three-row SUV that was intended to be manufactured in Canada, with Jim noting that Americans want affordable vehicles and not another $60,000 to $70,000 electric SUV. We still don't have details on the digital aspect of the platform or specifics on range, but do you think Ford is on the right track with this new platform? Personally, I have been bummed that the company's lineup had little model diversity, but I am very excited about them investing in making a truly compelling product by doing their homework and engineering something that combines all the best of each EV maker on the market today, including their fierce competitors, the Chinese automakers. Most importantly, they need to be able to do it profitably, and Jim Farley says they have a path to that. It is officially game on for federally funded EV fast charging infrastructure throughout the United States. We shared details of California restarting just a couple of weeks ago after a nearly six month pause for auditing. On Monday, the U.S. Department of Transportation released revised guidance for the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure, also known as NEVI, formula program. Transportation Secretary Duffy acknowledged the program has been restarted, stating, while I don't agree with subsidizing green energy, we will respect Congress's will and make sure this program uses federal resources efficiently. This comes after 17 states had sued the federal government for withholding the NEVI funds and won, as we reported just a few weeks ago. Rules for distribution of the $5 billion fund previously favored union labor construction in locations in disadvantaged areas. The new guidelines removed those restrictions and simplified the state plan approval process. According to the NEVI dashboard linked in this video's description, only about 10% of the funding has been awarded by the states to contractors. In fact, 12 states have not awarded any contracts since the program started 36 months ago in September of 2022. Those states include Wyoming, West Virginia, South Dakota, South Carolina, Montana, Mississippi, Missouri, and Louisiana. Each of those has comparatively low EV adoption and poor DC fast charging density. Washington and Florida are also on the list, but those states have high EV adoption and strong privately funded EV infrastructure. The original NEVI guidelines contained a crucial requirement that charging stations would be required every 50 miles along highway corridors. That stipulation was intended to fill in charging deserts by forcing construction even in areas of low density and infrequent travel. In order for EVs to become entirely viable for everyone, some charging stations will need to be available in locations which are not economically viable by themselves. The new guidelines remove the requirement for uninterrupted corridors. States can place stations wherever they wish. We've already seen private charging networks rush to install hardware in affluent areas and along popular corridors such as Los Angeles to Las Vegas or Washington DC to New York City. The states with very little fast charging infrastructure are already a bottleneck which 
prevents efficient long-distance travel in remote areas. The new guidelines also remove the state requirement to address consumer protections, which could result in even more price gouging by publicly funded hardware operators. The new guidelines also remove requirements for states to prioritize renewable energy, which will make things easier for states like Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and West Virginia, which have the least renewable energy available on their grids. Notably, there have been no changes to overall funding allocation. While some of these changes will result in suboptimal results, hopefully the removal of limitations will improve the chances of a speedy installation process for the remaining funding and charging ports. It was Car Week in Monterey, and several new vehicles are on display at the Quail and Pebble Beach concourse this week, including a new autonomous EV coming to the United States, and this one will be available for purchase. Tensor, a Silicon Valley-based AI startup, has revealed the Tensor Robocar, which they claim will be the world's first level 4 autonomous vehicle designed for private ownership. It is set to become available for purchase in the US, Europe, and UAE in the second half of 2026. The company spun off Chinese-backed AutoX, which was an autonomous driving software developer, which had been permitted to test autonomous vehicles in California since 2020. The Tensor Robocar's Level 4 autonomy stack enables fully autonomous driving in defined conditions, without human intervention. Its sensor suite includes 37 cameras, 5 custom LiDARs, 11 radars, 22 microphones, and 10 ultrasonic sensors, among others, powered by an NVIDIA onboard supercomputer with 8,000 tops. The vehicle's AI, built on the Tensor Foundation model, uses a dual system approach. System 1 mimics human reflexes for quick responses, while System 2 employs a multimodal visual language model for complex decision making in challenging conditions like fog or night driving. A foldable steering wheel and sliding display allow seamless transitions between autonomous and manual modes. The Robocar operates on an 845 volt high voltage electric platform. It features intelligent charging capabilities including autonomous navigation to charging stations and compatibility with fast charging infrastructure. The company classifies the vehicle as an SUV, measuring longer, taller, and wider than a Tesla Model X or BMW i7. Exterior displays react to the owners through voice commands inside or outside of the cabin and through gestures like waving your hand while hailing a cab. Tensor stores all data locally with end-to-end -end encryption for privacy and is targeting FMVSS and IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus ratings for safety. Manufacturing will take place at VinFest's facility in Vietnam, though components are largely sourced by Western suppliers, including Continental, ZF, Autolive, and Viennier. Pricing and U.S. distribution specifics have not been revealed. U.S. tariffs on imported vehicles from Vietnam are currently 20%, which are slightly higher than Canada or Mexico's averages. If demand proves sufficient, perhaps Tensor could prompt a resumption of construction at VinFest's North Carolina facility. What would a brand like Tensor need to do to capture your interest? Other notable concepts in pre-production EVs in Monterey this week include the Cadillac Elevated Velocity concept, Lucid's Gravity X concept, and Acura's RSX prototype, formerly known as the Performance EV concept. The RSX will be the first model based on Honda's latest in-house EV platform shared with their upcoming saloon. A production version of the RSX will be built at the Honda EV Hub in Ohio and will be coming in the second half of 2026. I'll include links to all the interesting EV concepts which were announced after we recorded this episode. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so that we can continue producing this program. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.